you were to walk into a flower shop, a big box store, a garden center, anything like that, and your eyes are attracted and they catch your interest here with blooms like this, or something like this, here, there on the table, they look pretty, you want some of that, and then back here, blooms that look like this. I'm just going to show you examples. Please do not judge the quality of my examples. In your garden centers, etc., they will be much more robust, bigger and shinier looking. But this is basically a little description or a show display of what you would find in your general big box stores, Lowe's, Home Depot, and in our case here, Leroy Merlin, or our garden centers. So this would be obviously the most common ones you would see with variation of flowers, big, small. I have just brought the small one out as an example. So this would be a Phalaenopsis. Here I'm represented with my Francis Fox, but as a representation for the Cattleya type, I brought out my Francis Fox, but it is just a representation. Doesn't mean that you can find this specific one in your big box store. And if you can, I would snap it up and grab it, but it's a representation. And then back here is what we would call a complex hybrid of a Dendrobium nobile. They are very, very common in Ikea and all those stores as well. And then just a Cambria and Oncidium type as an example of what you would find because everybody starts at zero. And I thought, why don't I just go through the essentials, provide you with a shopping list of what you would do before you bring your first orchid home. Just like, for example, if you were to go get a puppy or a kitten or any such thing, you would buy its bed, its food, a blanket, some toys, all these kinds of things. And I just thought, well, let me talk you through the starter kit for your orchid growing hobby. Okay, so this might look very overwhelming, but I would say about 60% you already have in your home. And then there's a few recommendations from my opinion, my behalf, that I would feel when you bring your new orchid home, what you might not have at home and what I believe is the basic basic to provide for it in its first few months with you before becoming a little bit more elaborate on the hobby. So let's just start with what you would have at home. Probably at home you already have alcohol. I have a 96% here recommended as 70 but I can dilute this down for my needs. So alcohol, if you've got that at home, perfect. You need it. If you don't, then I would highly recommend 70% alcohol to be bringing it home. The next you probably have at home, scapes, scrapes and all that kind of thing, cleaning and etc., is hydrogen peroxide. In our case regarding with regards to orchids, it's very recommended to use only 3%. If you have a higher concentration, then you can always dilute it down accordingly to get 3%. So 3%, no more concentration of hydrogen peroxide. I'm just going with the flow here. I assume this is already part of a household product. If not, you would need this. And then maybe you're already growing some plants. There are very, very highly specialized orchid fertilizers. I have my own fertilizer that I got, but it doesn't have orchids on it. So I'm not going to show a complicated package. This is a starter kit video. So you have maybe a fertilizer at home already. For orchids, you need a quarter strength of fertilizer. No more. So if you have some generic fertilizer at home, don't go out and buy some. Quarter strength, do not go full strength with these normal generic fertilizers okay if you don't have any fertilizer at home already for your house plants then by all means from the garden center big box store buy an orchid specific fertilizer but stick to half strength another thing i'm i'm assuming we have at home is a 
spray bottle that we recycle from any kind of maybe an odor, eliminator, whatever it is, a spray bottle. This is good for storing your alcohol in and if you don't want to, to run around with a big bottle. When we spray for bugs and to kind of disinfect our tools, this is awesome just to have a separate spray bottle at hand ready to go, especially because I have a 96% concentration and in here I have 70 because I diluted it down with some water. So an extra spray bottle, recycled from anything else that was used before, washed out and cleaned for alcohol. The same would apply for hydrogen peroxide. In a separate spray bottle, keep it in a dark location, you don't want them out in the bright light, but a separate spray bottle for the similar purpose of cleaning out the roots or getting rid of molds, hydrogen peroxide 3% into a separate spray bottle ready to go. Maybe you have another spray bottle hanging around that you can recycle. This is ideal for plain water and for misting. So if you have another one, then put some plain water in here and mist with that. Very useful to keep humidity around your orchid and make sure that some of the media doesn't dry out if you're not ready to water the entire orchid. A little bit of misting is a good thing. If your water is very hard, and I'm talking higher than 6.57 pH, then I would make sure to drop this down with a pH down solution that you might want to bring home from your garden center, and then bring the pH down to about 6.5 to 6 pH with a pH meter. If you don't have one of these, if you don't know the quality of your water, it would be very interesting for you to get a pH meter because it is fundamental that the orchids are not uh, brought into contact with water that is too hard. pH meter will help you with that and the pH down will help you to get it into the right range of 6, 6.5. Now many growers will go down as far as 5.5 in a pH. And that is fine and that works depending on what media you're working with. If you don't have anything to go on or nothing at home, orchids do not grow in soil, they are epiphytes, you would want some bark. You want to get some orchid bark. And this is obviously going to be a little bit more acidic when you water and it will start to break down eventually depending on the quality of what you're buying. So I would never go below six when it comes to working with organic media. Never below 6.0 pH, that is my recommendation. So you could buy bark, make sure that's on your shopping list if this is how you want to continue growing your orchid when it comes to repotting it. When you work with inorganic media, like you see a lot of these clay pebbles, or you have big chunks of lava, which is awesome for epiphytes, or depending on the size of the roots of your orchid and how much water it will want, you can also do small size lava rock. So basically for the three examples that I just showed you, there's one, and I'll put it up in the marker here, there's one, the Cambrios, the Oncidiums, they have smaller roots, they would prefer a smaller bark. If you're bringing one of those home and you want to grow inorganic, then by all means get a small sized lava rock. For the Cattleya types that you saw, like the Francis Fox, they like big chunks of rock because a lot of people like their orchids to dry out. That is something that you would like to maybe discover on your own, what your growing preference is. But big lava rock is never a bad thing to have at home when you're bringing home something like a cattleya or a phalaenopsis. The Dendrobium nobili I showed you has spinal roots as well. It would prefer small bark if you're going the inorganic route. Whereas Le Leca, in my opinion, is suitable for all types of orchids across the board of the examples that I showed you that you would find at your big box stores. 
So if you don't want to start experimenting with lava rock just yet, a bag of lecker will do just nicely. In the beginning, it would have to be cleaned. And when I've met, what I mean by that, you just have to wash it through with abundant amount of water to get the dust off. And then you are ready to use it. And of course, then there is the preference of pots. Your orchid will probably come in a pot like this. And then to repot it, normally it can stay in the same pot because you will be chopping off some roots and the space will be the same. But basically, you would need a pot. If it's not clear when your orchid comes home, the pot that it's in, some clear pots for the beginning would be a good thing because you can assess what the roots are doing inside the pot. Are they healthy? Are they hydrated? Do they need water? It makes it a little bit easier. In my case, for example, I always have an outer mask and I have an inner mask. So that is just a question of styling. How would you like to grow your orchids long term? In the beginning, these things are distractions unless you're already very clear how you want your setup to be. But basically, a pot, a saucer, or a mask, which is not a bad idea when you have a heavy orchid because it will help it to stay straight and not topple over. Sphagnum moss is very good for humidity. So if your big box store has a bag like this, not necessarily this brand, but get some sphagnum moss onto your first I'm bringing home my orchid starter kit. It is very good to be able to moisten and have humidity around the roots. Something else you might have in your kitchen already is cinnamon. If you've seen some previous of my videos, when we cut something, if you would like to go and have a look at the leaves where, the, where I discuss, you know, some maintenance, what I do every morning and how the cinnamon is applied on every cut to avoid any infections, we apply some cinnamon and normally we already have that in our home. If not, you would need that on your shopping list. And then we can go into the clippers. In the beginning, a small pair of clippers is plenty. There's no need to go with a big one like this. We're not at that stage yet, in my opinion, but usually we already have a big one. If we're into gardening and stuff like that, we have a big one in the house. So maybe you would want to get a small set of clippers, whichever would suit you, because some of the roots that need to be cut off are quite small and fine, and going in with a big one like this is a little bit awkward. So I've covered the pots with using this example. The only thing I want to show you is that if you are in a very, very humid climate, it is good sometimes to modify the pots that you get by adding extra holes in and around the outer edge so that there's aeration going out through the root system. These I made with hot nail over a flame and I heated the nail at red hot and then I burned and singed the holes into this pot. So your climate will determine if this is necessary. If you're in a very dry climate like mine is about eight months of the year, then I wouldn't put the, the holes in there anymore. Another thing that might be of interest because you will have some pests enjoying your orchids. For some reason, they do enjoy the buffet of orchids, which really, really is annoying. In the beginning, I wouldn't go with something really heavy and, and you have the, the alcohol will help for your mealybugs and for some scale. Hydrogen peroxide will help with the mold. But I would go with some kind of a soapy wash. If you don't already have that in your house, put that on your shopping list. Some kind of soapy wash so that you can always go for any kind of aphids or things, uh, little funguses that are trying to uh, mildew, that are trying to make their home on your orchid. You're ready to attack it with some soapy wash. This is not a systemic, it is a topical treatment, but it will work if you see something and you don't have that bigger collection and you want to make sure that your orchid is going to get attacked and eaten away. Some so so soapy wash. And then I have my little example of a mop based on your growing preference, what you might decide a mop will do nicely. And this is not the mop I used before, I've run out, but then I cut little strands from that mop and I use that for my self-watering setup as a wicking material to get the water from the bottom of the reservoir up throughout the medium. So maybe you already have a mop in the house. 
you have decided you would like to do something self-watering wise, then you are ready set to go. You cut the strands according to size. And uh, if you would like to look at the video I made about semi-hydro with microfiber, I'll put up a link. And uh, of course you will need a pitcher. This one is already very old, it's got taped up by now. <laughs> but you need a pitcher with some markers, especially for your fertilizing. When it says maybe one liter or how many ounces, etc., you have all the little markers on the side, and there you can mix up any solution a little bit more accurately than you would just doing it blindly, especially in the beginning. You'll only probably need that for about the first five waterings, and then you're like a pro and you're doing it with, oh, I know that this is this much amount and this is this much amount. Now, I have here. I'm not going to be in any kind of way uh, thinking that somebody doesn't require this, but I wish somebody would have told me at the beginning how important a TDS meter is to measure the PPM. I wish somebody would have told me. I'm not trying to be patronizing, but if you can get your hands on a TDS meter, it is very important when it comes to watering, fertilizing the orchids. It's quite important to know how much TDS is in your water when it comes out of the tap. As relevant as that is to know what your pH is when the water comes out of your tap. So this might sound like a little bit of a faff for one orchid or maybe you picked out two. But if somebody would have told me about the TDS meter many, many, many years ago, I would have thanked them to this day. All right, so I don't want to underestimate the TDS meter. And uh, we can discuss that further. If there is any interest in discussing the TDS meter, etc., please let me know in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to make a small video, short video. I know this one's getting a little bit long, but I wanted to at least discuss some reasons why I think these items belong on your shopping list for your first orchid. And um, for me, this would make a complete starter kit if I bring my first orchid home. And then, once we know what's going on with regards to how the orchid grows, how it's adapting to my environment, etc., then we can say, I need more of this, I would like to add that. But in the meantime, for my personal opinion, this is the starter kit. And for more information or a video or more detailed explanation about the TDS, it is not a long video, it is not complicated, please let me know in the comments below. I will not be assuming anything other than somebody coming home with their first orchid. As the title says, for me this is a shopping list, this is my starter kit and I recommend these items. So I hope that this was of help. And if there's anything that you might have missed or have any further questions on, I really just skimmed over the pH down and all that business. I just skimmed it because it is a shopping list. We're not going to lay a paragraph out for every single item. But um, yes, if you have any, any questions, let me know in the comments below. That is what I'm here for. And I would be very, very happy to help. And thank you very much for watching. And I sincerely hope that this little shopping list, which I will list now afterwards in a complete uh, list for you to take a screenshot of, I sincerely hope that it is the start of your orchid passion. Thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.